The options I was given for treatment was basically watch and wait or surgery. Whilst it was growing slowly, it would just continue to grow. As I sit here today, ostensibly I have no problems. My treatment, once I'd had the diagnosis of paraganglioma, was uh, coordinated at the Queen Elizabeth in Birmingham. Um, I was placed on alpha blockers to, to counter the effects of the high levels of noradrenaline that were being produced by my tumour. Some beta blockers as well, a particular type of beta blocker to help with the arrhythmia. But ultimately the only treatment that was available, there was no other treatment other than surgery and then excising the tumour. I had some trepidation about it, exactly how it was going to be, how it would turn out, um, whether the tumour could be completely removed. But I uh, went in the hospital for a couple of days before, um, kept in, taken down um, early in the morning, um, and then woke up some hours later uh, with Rebecca standing there talking to me um, and, and being told that the tumour had been completely removed. That surgery had gone extremely well. Fortunately, it turned out histology showed that the tumour was non-cancerous and there was no indication of spread. I was in ITU for about three days and they were managing some of my hormone levels whilst in ITU. Um, but even at that stage, I felt better. Uh, apart from having a great big wound in my chest where I'd been opened up to have it removed, but I felt almost immediately better once I'd come around. And over the next few days, everything was fine. My blood pressure had dropped down to normal levels. My heart rate was, was low for the first time in years and normal. Uh, my ECG was good. Um, my, my cardiac output was good. Uh, and as I sit here today, ostensibly I have no problems. I'm, I'm no longer on any medication. I consider myself very, very fortunate. The options I was given for treatment um, for uh, this tumour was basically watch and wait or surgery. Um, when I asked about surgery, uh, there was a whole list of risks that, that come with it, especially because the tumour was on the carotid artery. And those risks um, were amplified by the fact that there are a lot of delicate structures in the neck, the vagal nerve, your esophagus, um, your windpipe. Other risks included stroke um, and, you know, excessive blood loss. So these risks were quite scary and you know I had to contemplate them um, over a, quite a lengthy time I didn't rush into it by any means but even knowing all of that wondering every day if that lump was you know it how big is it growing how, is it going to metastasize that was even greater an even greater risk for me so I weighed up the options and opted for surgery It went very, very well. I had a really swollen neck, which would, which would obviously be expected. And the good news that they gave me was that um, they got the tumour out uh, successfully. They hadn't had to cut any nerves, but they had had to stretch them. So um, I had a lot of numbness, I had a little bit of facial paralysis um, to start off with. And... Um, it was a you know a little bit difficult to swallow at first, but I was absolutely relieved that actually it was out. I knew I still knew I'd made the right decision, and if any of this was permanent, I was happy. I was fine to live with that. But I knew that over the coming months, that a lot of that would would heal anyway. 
which it has done, and, and I'm nearly one year uh, post-op, and the, even the scar is difficult to see now, and the only thing I've got left is a little bit of numbness still. So I feel really well. So the treatment Arbutin presented to me um, was uh, to have the tumour surgically removed. Um, it really was the only option presented to me. I was told I could leave it if I wanted to, but um, I was strongly advised against that. It, whilst it was growing slowly, um, it would just continue to grow and its location would just cause more nerve damage in my neck um, and eventually get up into my brain. Uh, and the reading that I'd done supported that surgery was the only way to sort of cure um, the tumour. One of the main things we talked about was nerve damage. Um, the location my tumour was on my neck, there's lots of nerves around which operate different parts of your body. Um, and I was told that um, just with where it was, um, it'd be quite difficult to get in there. Um, and as a result, um, I might suffer some nerve damage. I'd never had surgery before. Um, so I was quite anxious um, about going for surgery. Um, I was even worried about anaesthetic, but I accepted that that was my only way to get this out and actually the headaches were that bad that it seemed like a good option. The day I went in for my surgery, um, I was first on the list and um, so I was straight in. Six hours later, um, I came out um, and the first thing we were told was it was a success and they got the tumour out. I was in the hospital for two weeks um, and at the point I left hospital I could eat about a teaspoon of yoghurt or um, smooth food. I went to speech and language therapy for about a year um, and I also had an injection into my vocal cord of a filler so that um, I could make more sound. Um, so that year of recovery on my vocal cords really helped me get my sound back things were getting back to more normal, what I call my new normal. So, Whilst my tumour is out, I am at lifelong risk of developing more, um, but I'm really confident that my follow-up is, is monitoring that, and um, actually because they're slow growing, it means that anything should be picked up early, and that's really important because the earlier um, something's found, the easier it could be treated. I, I, I don't feel um, stressed about it at all you know I, I'm not I'm, I'm at ease with it now it, it's there it's a bit of bad luck you could argue but also I've been very lucky in you know in the treatment that I've received. I, I am aware of the fact that I have an enhanced risk of developing tumours again in the future although uh, as, as was explained to me at the time that knowledge is developing um, year by year and case by case um, statistically speaking, as I sit here today, I could be in the process of developing another tumour, or it could be another 30 years. Um, nobody knows. But certainly for the moment, all is good. So, live life for the day and see what the future holds.